Ah, oh, listen to that. Music to my ears. This is my old setup for batteries. It was just on some shelves. And as you can see, very dusty. That can't be doing too well to the internals or the fan, the, you know, the cooling system, any of that. No good. Dust, pain in the ass. So we've got this, quite easy to assemble, a little, little tool cabinet. But what it is, is it's protected from any low-lying dust and, you know, if I shut the doors, it should keep the majority of dust out at most of the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a little hole in the back. I'm going to feed through my cord. Now I'm going to put a power board, power board, and power board. So I can put up to six battery chargers on any of these shelves. So one thing I've got to consider, this doesn't really have any vents. It's got a couple at the back, but in general this is enclosed. So once you put six... 12, 18 battery chargers in here, however many I end up with, it's actually gonna increase the heat quite a lot and they'll go into failure mode. You get too hot, happens all the time up north, put all your battery chargers in a C container, C container gets warm, batteries stop charging, you end up with flat batteries. So what I'm gonna do is monitor it for now, because it's winter, so this is one of those jobs I can put in the too hard basket, get around to it later. Set it up, see how it goes, monitor it. I was gonna use actual outlets, mount them on wall boxes, run, I was gonna run conduit between these, have it all sealed, have it all tidy, but there's two reasons why I ended up not. These, three bucks, just there. A four banger outlet by itself was gonna cost 25 bucks minimum, and that's for the cheap brands. And just the pure nature of battery chargers all having their leads, all having their own cable, you know, it's gonna look messy in a rat's nest in here anyway. So I'll just throw a few cable ties on afterwards. All it is is to charge my batteries. This isn't some magnificent thing. So all I need is a hole in the back and that's it. Hole in the back, 20 bucks worth of these. I bought the little extension leads with the extra face on them. Should work out quite good. This cheapo punch is nowhere near as good as industrial proper grade punches, but it's pretty simple. All you do. Put your pinion in there, pinion, guide, rod, I don't know what the real term is. That sits in here. Make sure the thread's all the way in. This piece is your cutting blade. So when you pull, so all this does is hydraulically pulls it in. This piece with the teeth, perfect machine to fit that. Bob's your uncle. So you do female in <coughs> you place the head in the hole and you put the teeth on the other side Once that's all set up, it's just a matter of turning the valve and pumping.
One little bonus this, this cheap punch does have is for the smaller, smaller dies, normally these are threaded themselves, so these just thread on, the top half threads on afterwards, but these are left loose. So it gives you a little bit more slop in your hole. But if you, obviously, if you got this, you're not doing the most precise things. But this outer guide, this lock nut, to hold that versus that, will actually hold the head unit in the hole once you're finished. So this stops it from falling down. A lot of big problems, if you're punching out a gland plate or something above your head or whatever, your hands are here pumping. And once you're finished, this will drop and then you either end up damaging this, blowing that out or breaking something you don't want to break. I've actually smashed one of my phones with it before. I was using the phone as a, a, a torch light where I was punching out a hole under somewhere and <clears throat> I was preoccupied with this and didn't even think about the danger that I, the stupid idiot that I've become smashed and you know, cost me a couple hundred bucks, didn't it? So I punched out a 20 mil hole, nice clean hole. Now I'm gonna swap it out for a 51 mil, I believe is the size. I measured it against the plug before. Put the female on. Now this is exactly what I was talking about before. This has the threads. So once I finish punching this hole, this head is gonna wanna drop. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. But depending on the situation, that is a minus. I did just watch um, a video by Milwaukee. At, they had like a tool conference sort of thing. <clears throat> and they're bringing out there. They were showing off their new punch tool, which is also, a, um, it's just a little battery operated, slim line. Looked real good. And so, I'm not quite sure how it works. The video didn't show me. I'd like to see how it actually grabs. But you put this assembly in, then you just put your tool on and go boom, and it's done. As opposed to this, try and lift up this head and put it on. It looks quite genius. Where it works out in practice, who knows? I haven't seen it. Can't rate it yet. I'd love to get my hands on one. But um, I think it'll be a few years down the track before any sort of new tool really takes over this system. This really is this industrial standard. Tried and test the method, you know. Put them down there. Pump, 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 pump. I can already feel the resistance. And that's that drop I was talking about. But we've got a hole. All right, now it's just a case of plug through. Now what I am going to have to do is I'm going to have to protect that edge. I don't want that sitting there on the cord like that, even though it's not going to move much. I can't find where, I've got a roll of it somewhere and I can't find it. So I'm going to have to come back to putting this on, but I'm going to carry on forward because not the biggest issue. Um, but definitely you want to protect this edge, even though the punch is a very clean cut, you want, you want it to be protected. As I picked up some of these, these little piggyback plugs. All they are is you can keep plugging in. So I'm just going to daisy chain these through. Again, three bucks. I was going to do it all like a real install. I mean, I am an electrician, but 20 bucks total. Why would you? Right, so we have the power boards in. I know what you're thinking, it looks a bit messy. It is what it is. We will tidy it up once we've got the chargers in. So that's all we've got left to do. In and over to the fat chargers sing. Ah, oh, listen to that. Music to my ears. And there you have it. Always leave room for expansion, and I do have a couple more charges, but they're currently away at the moment. On loan to someone, doing a bit of repair, so more room down there. Can always fit more in. Another shelf down here, whatever I need to do. I do need somewhere to store all this junk, so 
That's probably going to go down there. And we're charging. We're off. Success. What you'll notice is the hum. I don't know if this microphone's good enough, but we'll try it out. Here's how it sounds nicely enclosed. Compared to before, when it was all out in the open. So, not that it's a big problem in a shop where you're probably gonna be making noise anyway. But it is nice to have a bit of a tranquil moment to sit and think about how you stuff something up. Oh well, thanks for watching. Nice, quick, easy one. Probably not too exciting for most of you, but for someone that might be struggling or used to just keep their battery chargers on a bench or something, you find yourself getting overwhelmed. It's not a bad idea. Find yourself a cabinet. This is a Tool Pro one from Super Cheap Auto. Pretty decent cabinet, I like the finish. Really suits the shop. Quietens it down, keeps the dust out of it, neatens the joint up. We'll keep a close eye on how warm they get in there, whether I start getting faults. I'm not gonna go ahead and get a fan just yet. I'll wait, but if I do need a fan, I'll just pick up a 240 jobby, a little and then uh, probably just punch another hole, screw it in, plug it into a power board, job's done. Quick, easy, simple, makes the shot look a whole lot better.